Look, there's this topic in acting that is worth taking a look at for your acting, as well as studying, you know, in general, in acting. And it's the topic of shame in acting. And the need to work through shame. Now, there, there's obvious, obvious things. In the beginning, you're in front of an audience, or you're in front of a camera, or you're, you're, you're um, realizing that there's these elements of, of shame that you have to work through, right? So let's discuss that. It, it's, look, it's really, it's really worth examining this topic. Now, there is the, the type of work that you would do with emotional preparation where you go into your shame intentionally activating it and then you use that shame in your work. But in this uh, discussion we're, we're looking to look at the um, we're trying to expand our emotional repertoire. We want to be able to rid ourselves of the quality of shame in our work so that we can have the responsiveness it's vital. It's important. This is something that actually matters in acting. I've seen a lot of work. A lot of work. And it, it's, it's, very, it's a very interesting topic. Okay, so we want to be able to expand our emotional repertoire. Now what does that mean? We want to be able to expand our ability to be able to be when something actually happens to us, that we're able to actually um, emotionally be able to actually respond, right? Where our respons uh, responsiveness or our emotional responsive, uh, responsive, I'm not saying the word right, but you know what I mean, the responsiveness. You've got to have the responsiveness of the emotion. So you've got the responsiveness of the emotion. You, you're, you're, working through the areas that will actually make your acting better because what you're Hi. doing now is listen could you please just help me out shame. I and need the really point. really the point good is acting questions so I can to help allow you out. so if you can write down in the comment section each comment a separate in question acting, write down an acting is. question it would really help to be that able you to don't have want people, people learn to acting. see you need to work through the shame of allowing people to see it now, this is really counter, it's, it's, it's kind of counteractive, or it's, some, it's a little bit counterintuitive, but what will end up happening is when you start to work with this element, and you start to be able to uh, permission yourself to be able to show your most shameful moments, or your most like embarrassing qualities in your acting, what will actually happen is you'll have this emotional growth. Now, I know that this is true because I have seen this be true. And it takes a courage, a courageous actor, it takes somebody with courage to be willing to be able to expose them, emotionally expose themselves like this. So you've got to be able to, to work to be able to do this. And, it, and there's a few different uh, things that you can do that can really work on those elements. Now you want to actually realize what's external right? What you really externally have. So you want to realize externally what is going on with you internally. So your, your point is, is that you want to be able to consistently, consistently in your work, you have something that's maybe an impulse, there's some feelings going on, but they haven't really done anything, then they turn into some sort of emotion, because things get deeper in the exercise or in the acting work or the scene and then all of a sudden you want to consistently almost have this thing where you just vomit up the emotion. You vomit it up obviously because the other person's pulling it out of you. You don't resist. You don't hold back. You want to vomit it out. You want that to be part of the acting. Now, 
It means that there's going to be there's going to be unpredictable moments, but there're going to be moments of unpredictability and they're going to make sense within the context of the acting. And that's key. That's very key. You want to keep yourself responsive. So we you've got your ability so that you've got to be able to see if you bottle stuff up. That's another word that they used to call back in the day. They used to call it bottling up. If you're bottling yourself up, don't do that in acting. You want to be able to not have yourself bottled up. You want to take whatever that emotion... See, emotions will not always... Um, sometimes you can activate emotions, and you can definitely learn to activate emotions in acting. But sometimes, while the exercises are working, the acting exercises, or while the scene's working on, there's little inclinations that keep building up. And then gets to a point where you, you've got a pocket full of them and you're not really sure what to do. Let them go. Let them out. Vomit it out. Get it out of you. Part it. Put it into your acting. Um, work with it to be interactive. Now this is part of actually the ability and the need to get rid of shame in acting. This is part of the process. Now. I don't even know many people that have ever talked about this. And I think that it's very important that people hear it. Now, there are specific moments, right, that have, now there's the basics that, well, let's look at, the, so the basics are, you, you want to work through your basic nerves in acting, right? So you want to work through your basic nerves of having people see you, having people see your emotions, having people see what's inside of you. Because a lot of times, you don't know what your audience, who your audience is. So you might not know that your audience is so perceptive that they're actually able to see very, very well inside of you. So your audience might be watching something that's inside of you that's internal, and unless you turn that over to externalize it, unless you turn it out to vomit it out of your body, and you put it out and you put it in your work, it's never going to be able to be able to fully be free. It's never going to be fully able to be able to be interactive. And that's the point. You want to be able to get yourself so it's very, very, very interactive. Now, when you ex do an unexpected emotion happens. Unexpected emotion. Now, this could be an unexpected feeling, too. This could be something that's actually just something that happens and you have an unexpected reaction. And when unexpected things happen in your work, you want to embrace them. You want to absolutely just, this is it. You know, th this is, there's, there's an element of this. There's an, there's an element that you feel. Then you want to be able to respond to it and you want to let it go. You want to let it go into your acting. You don't know what the result's going to be. You don't want to control the results. You want to be able to put it into your acting. Instead of restricting yourself, you want to consistently train yourself that when you've got something internal, you vomit it out. You put it in your work. You're that kind of raw. You you're, have the ability that you don't need to hide it. There's something going on in you. There it is. There it is externally. So you've got it so that you're able to be able to consistently be able to work. And that, honestly, that is what builds actors' trust with the audience. When the audience can consistently see that you have an acting technique that will actually put out the acting work and it will put it out in a way that if you feel it or if, you, if they see it in you and you don't bottle it up, you, you put it out there, then you're going to start getting audience trust. And I, I, you know, I do the same thing. I have to remind myself, is there something I'm holding back is what I ask myself. Is there anything I'm holding back? Is there something else I have to be willing to be able to put out there? Is there something else that I I'm, I'm, um, can identify that I haven't put out there that's alive in me? Is it something that's alive? Is it something that's, uh, that, that, that I have a response to? Am I, am I holding it back? If it is, then I want to be able to make an adjustment so it's out there. Now, you want to steer. Okay, now there's this, this little trick that actors will do that is not ideal. And the trick is that they will steer themselves away from feeling certain emotions. Now this is just part of working through actors blocks. 
it's it's normal. I mean, this is happens. To, I mean, honestly, I have seen, I have definitely seen stars do this. I'm not picking on stars. I'm just saying, like, if if you look up to people that are doing movies and you don't realize that they edit it down just to very specific points, it it makes it look really good. And plus, they add all the coloring to the to things so that you think that you're seeing the emotion, but you're actually just seeing the 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 screen go a little bit red or they're adding blush to the actor's uh, face to make it look like they're actually having emotion where they don't have really have that much emotion. See, you want to be able to, in a raw way, be able to get those emotions and then if, if they get enhanced later then it's even more powerful. So it, there's this, that's steering yourself away from feeling something that gets activated in you isn't ideal. It's kind of part of manipulation. And you don't want to start to get down that road of manipulating. It means that you're calculating, constantly calculating, every single thing in your work. And uh, it is the way to pull yourself away from the opposite of what I've just described. You, or, you, you, it's the complete opposite of what I've just described. What I've just described is the ability to be able to be free and be able to get the responses and put the responses out. Right? You've got to be able to get the responses. You get the responses by listening, by paying attention, by being present. All of a sudden you've got responses that are inside of you. Audiences see that the um, responses come inside. And then you vomit it out. You put it out there. You get it out of yourself. You work with it. And you don't know what the results are going to be from doing that. And that's the anticipation of acting. That's the excitement of, of being in the moment. That's the excitement of going moment to moment. Or back in the day they used to call it going to gut to gut. So the opposite of that is the manipulation. It's the calculation. It's, um, you know, there is... Um, you know, I'm not picking on anybody, but sometimes you can see this with the ladies. They'll try and manipulate and they'll play people. Like they're trying to play somebody's like de desire or they're trying to do that. Now, some of that can be stylistic and acting like film noir and that can be very, very entertaining. I get that. But the thing is, is what we're looking for is we're looking for a baseline in our acting where um, we're not looking to be absolutely at this moment training the stylistics. And the stylistics are a little bit different because there could be stylistics that could, that could be very interesting and intriguing. Now, with men, typically they want to be able to compete with each other. So they manipulate each other to be able to compete with each other. It happens with women too. It happens across the board. But I'm just saying that's kind of the area that you might be able to notice that when you're watching acting. If you're watching acting classes, if you're acting, watching uh, uh, acting work, or if you're working at dynamics where you're seeing stuff in films and you can see scenes and you can think, oh yeah, this is this, there is some elements of this here. Now, the other one here that's very key is self-manipulation. Now, showing only one side of yourself is not the goal in acting. Now look, I'm very clear. It's very, very clear. When you're in a situation, you're in a situation, you have put yourself in two types of things. There is the being work of acting, and then there is the doing work of acting. The doing work is the interaction. The being work is your emotions. So you've got your emotions, you're stimulating your emotions, this is stuff that you do, that's not manipulation. That's actually you doing what's called an emotional preparation process, or back in the day they used to call it inner life. You would mine your inner life, and you'd get your inner life ready, and then you'd go out and have an unanticipated experience. This is ideal in acting. This is exactly, exactly the techniques that you can achieve and you can get to be able to gain this. Now, the self-manipulation is when you're in the work and you're only trying to show one side of yourself. But look, and it's very, very, very clear. If you're only emotionally prepared on one thing, of course you're going to have a tendency towards having that one thing come out. 
That's going to be a tendency. And that's just correct work. That's just because you're not, you're not forcing it. You're not playing it. You're just, you activated it, and then now you're interacting. And the interaction is actually part of what's happening to be able to work. Now, uh, I don't normally mention people, but I will mention this. You know, Susan Boyle, I think that's her name. Um, now, she said that that was only one side of her. Very famous quote of hers. When somebody asked about something, they said, uh, she, she replied back to them, that was only one side of her. That's the idea. This is the reason. I mean, as soon as that was, I saw that and she said that, I knew, okay, she's going to have some sort of talent. Because she, she's talented. She has to be talented. And she would be a fine actress. Because the thing is, is that the reality of this is that she knows. She knows. She knows the secret to acting. She knows the secret to, to, to being alive and awake and aware and, and being interactive. And that is that you don't only show or present one side of yourself. You don't know what side of yourself is going to come out sometimes when you're working. You do your emotional preparation in the ballpark. You can pick any emotion. And then you work with that emotion. And the tendency is, is that emotion will come out in your work. So if I pick something where, I don't know. I don't want to do examples right now. But, but here's the thing. There's many, many examples, and it's very simple. And there's other examples on this channel. So, um, anytime you restrict yourself, it's a form of manipulation. Hi. Now listen, could you please just help me out? I need really, really good acting questions so I can help you out. So, if you're holding something back, if there's something that you want to say and you're not saying it, why? Why aren't you saying it? Now, if there's a reason why the writer hasn't written that line yet and you need to hold that suspense, then that's a different story. But we're dealing with the ability to know how to act, learn how to act, and be able to be free in acting. So we're dealing with improv uh, improvisation, uh, improvisations or... Um, uh, well, there's a, a whole bunch of exercises that are acting exercises that I'm applying this to as I'm talking to you because I know I'm trying to, well, I'm working to be able to get from all of the different experiences. And by the way, these are not all my notebooks. Um, these are just some. If you would, boop the like button. It helps. It would help. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It does, it does help some people. Um, all right, so look. You've got the shame. We're dealing with working through shame. So we, we have this need to work through shame in acting. Now look, be very clear. This isn't only your problem. This isn't only one person's issue. This is every single actor's issue. There has always been, I don't care what top name that you know I've seen the acting classes of. I know full well that I've watched some of them work through shame. And when I say some of them, I'm talking about some of the emotions to every single person that I have seen on stage. They have worked through shame. Now, if they haven't worked through shame, sometimes it's because they're belligerent and they're not like that they just came in and they said that they were going to try acting and they were going to go and do this. Or they were one of these uh, actors that came in and said that the only thing that they were going to work with was conviction. And the only thing that they ever did in exercises was intimidate another person. Now, that is, those people didn't work through shame. But they had shame, and I saw where their shame was. So, um, it's not something that's just an isolated issue for one actor. This is something that we all have our own shame. We work through our own shame. We work through what it is so that we can we have this ability so that we can be seen by the audience. Now, um, the other thing you don't want to do, very simply, very quickly here, is you don't want to have edited responses. You don't want to edit out your own responses. If, if, it, if it hits you, it works, then vomit it back, put it back. Even if you can't say the words, because that's not the timing of the script, vomit it back, put it back, 
put it back, put it back, put it back. Keep working so that you're able to put your emotions back in. And you keep putting your emotions back in and you don't know what the results are going to be until you see the results, until you witness the results, until you receive the results. And then when you've got something else, then you put it back. Put it back. That's exactly how to be able to do this work. And that's exactly how to be able to work through shame. Now look. I'll be the first to admit it. I have had to work through shame. Of course. I have not been the only person to have to work through shame. And it's just part of the deal. It's part of learning. And once you're able to, then all of a sudden you've got these elements of freedom in your work and all of a sudden you want to go and do acting more because you're actually in a place where you're actually a uh, uh, healthier actor. You're actually uh, capable and you're in a place where you're um, more responsive. So um, 